Today is January 11th, 2012. My name is Teresa Larson and I'm talking with Joy Munn in her apartment here in Ames. Joy, thank you for joining us. And may I have permission to record your voice and picture today? Of course. Well, thank you. Tell me your birth date and where you were born. I was born December 15th, 1924, so I just had my 87th birthday. Congratulations. I was born in a homestead in Saskatchewan in the middle of a howling blizzard. So I was delivered by my father and my grandma. <laughs> so you grew up in Canada. Yes. And I grew up mainly in Regina, which is the capital city of Saskatchewan. Mm -hmm. And what did your father do? He, well of course, uh, initially he was a farmer, and when uh, farming didn't work out during the Depression, then he, he became a mortgage inspector for um, Great West Life Insurance Company. Mm -hmm. Am I talking to you or the giver? You. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, tell me about your schooling in Canada. Yes. Um, we didn't have kindergarten. That was not. Uh, all the, we did, didn't do that in Canada mm -hmm. at that time, and uh, so I started in in uh, grade two, of course, and uh, I went to high school at Central Collegiate in Regina, mm -hmm. and then I worked for a couple of years as a retoucher for a, a photographer. A retoucher for mm -hmm. a photographer. So you had art interests. But well, that was not the ex actually okay. <laughs> in art interests. It, oh. it was a job. It was a job. Okay. <laughs> to uh, uh, earn money for college. Mm -hmm. And where did you first go to college? I went. I studied. I what I was very much wanted to be an artist. And I would have liked to have gone to the Arts Institute in Chicago because somebody in, in Regina had gone there and I, that was the only Arts Institute I even knew about at that time. But uh, uh, the servant sounded and that didn't allow that. I wanted to do things, things that would be useful to her people and that I could do myself. So I ended up as an occupational therapist, and that took a two-year uh, special course in the, at the University of Toronto. So occupational therapy mm -hmm. at the University of Toronto, and because you had taken some time out to earn money, about how old were you when you finished that program, roughly speaking? Yeah. Oh, I was. Twenty and one, something like okay. that. I have no idea. <laughs> okay. And did you get to practice occupational yes. therapy mm -hmm. then? And where did you practice? In, well, I practiced in Montreal, where I uh, had a, a hard time because in in uh, Canada, you know, they uh, they do speak French in in that part of the world. But they, they don't speak Parisian French. But I took Parisian French in high school because I didn't know any better. I had a very hard time connecting with the children that I was working with. As I said, say, how are you? And they'd say, huh? <laughs> So um, after practicing mm -hmm. occupational therapy and using your art um, to help mm -hmm. people, I mean, how did you get to the United States? Well, first, um, my whole, uh, career in occupational therapy, I worked for the city of Vancouver, and I, I uh, TB was very uh, prevalent at that time. 
and I had a home service program for TP patients in the who could stay home. And tell me how that worked. How did you well, produce that? How did that happen? Well, it was it was very interesting because I traveled all over the city. I had a little Ford Angli, Anglia that they provided me with. I didn't know how to drive, so I I went at night for one week to learn to drive in Vancouver. <laughs> and um, then I made it all over the city, uh, visited mansion at Hobbles. It was mm -hmm. very interesting. But I really, my heart was in art. Mm -hmm. And I got tired of uh, two months of hospital situations. Yes. And my uncle, who was a professor at Iowa State in Ag Economics, Professor Jeffrey Shepard, mm -hmm. uh, always invited me to come to Iowa State and start a Sutter Art because they had very wonderful instructors at that time, including Christian Peterson, whom I studied with. Christian Peterson is a well-known name to many people. I'm sure they can think of the image of the gentle doctor, hold the sculpture of the veterinarian holding the dog. So what a privilege to study with Christian Peterson. It was wonderful, yes, indeed. And can you also give me, when did you come to Ames? About what time period? I came here in 1950. 1950, and so your uncle, Shepard, invited you. Mm -hmm. And so did you live in their home? Yes. They mm -hmm. had five kids. The youngest was four and the oldest was 17. Mm -hmm. And we had a wonderful time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I arrived on the city of Portland, which is a beautiful train from Seattle mm -hmm. going west. And uh, I arrived on New Year's Day my uncle and aunt were very casual about uh, things that uh, went in and on their in their house, and they never thought to meet me. So, so here you are, New Year's Day. It's cold. You're arriving in Ames. You don't know anyone. Did you make it to their home somewhere? How somehow in West Ames? Yes, there was <laughs> there was a restaurant that is taxi right beside the the trade station. At that time. At that time. Mm -hmm. So I got a taxi in. <laughs> and I went there for the first time and met all these cousins. And then they lived on Woodland Street. And I always remember it was a beautiful snowy morning. And uh, I went through their living room to their kitchen and you would see the snow-covered trees out the side the window, and there was my first cardinal. <laughs> I'll never forget that. That would be memorable to see mm -hmm. that bright red bird yeah. mm -hmm. on, against those trees. Tell me a little bit about studying with Christian Peterson. What kind of a person was he? Supportive or critical or just uh, helped shape you, shaped your ideas? Mm -hmm. What kind of a person was he? He was a very wonderful instructor, and he treated everybody according to their skills, and, and, and he would, so I learned a lot with, with, with him, and, but he never touched any of my work. He just let me go and would, you know, make suggestions, <laughs> and when we did my, or what you call their neighbor work. I did a, a young woman with a toddler at her knee read a book. And was this in sculpture or print? In sculpture. Sculpture. It was about mm -hmm. 18 inches high. Mm -hmm. And um, the thing that I will always remember about that was he finally took hold of my work. <laughs> and he criticized it and 
look this way and lad that way. And then he took the mother's shoulders and just turned them a little bit. And he took the little boys and turned, and he turned this way, and it made all the difference in the world. <laughs> he knew for your, you know, this was called your major work or your yeah. principal work mm -hmm. for that year. Yeah. He knew just a little bit of angle to make it right. Yeah, exactly. And you appreciated it. You mm -hmm. felt like he was not being arrogant or pushy. No, he no. was just teaching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you mentioned that he taught according to someone's skills. Mm -hmm. So does that mean that the more gifted people, he might have pushed them a little harder? And maybe the people who were not as skilled, he was just supportive? Of course. Because people took that course, some of them took it because they, it was available mm -hmm. and easy, so-so. So-so. <laughs> <laughs> and so other people, of course, were taking it for uh, other reasons. Mm -hmm. and Did you have more than one course with Mr. Christian Peterson? Yes, I had uh, two, two, two courses. courses. And uh, then I, uh, and then I stopped because I got a job with WOI. Well, let's talk about that. <laughs> um, television was very new at that time. Very new. And I call it, myself a pioneer. You were a pioneer. <laughs> well, um, had you watched TV at your uncle's house? D did you know about WOI? My kids, my. Uncle's kids had to go to a neighbor's to watch uh -huh. t TV. They didn't have. They didn't have one. Yeah. Okay. They were too. Uh -huh. um, well, yeah, far how? above. <laughs> <laughs> so how does an Iowa State unit? Well, you were an experienced student. You were not just like an undergrad. You were an experienced yeah. person by yeah. that time. But how does a person with this experience get hooked up with television? You just don't walk in the TV. How do you? How did that happen? That was interesting also because I was always interested in drama mm -hmm. and plays. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I joined the, the radio workshop because I got to know them through my association uh, with Iowa State, of course. So, the, so oh, there was a radio workshop. Yes. Now, was this WOI radio? It was. It mm -hmm. was. And did you actually do voice and dramas on the air. Yes. So Okay, so you had already become acquainted with some of the WOI radio people. Yes. Okay. That's right. And uh, I, my, one of the roles that I played was Mary at, at Christmas time, and they had to adjust my way of speaking because I was talking Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> and Mary didn't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you were known as um, a person who could relate to a microphone already, and so how did you meet WI well, personnel, well, TV? Actually, actually uh, through, it turned out to be my in-laws, because the, the Munns, who had the lumber, uh, he, they established the lumber yard in 1891. Mm -hmm. at the end of Main Street, and mm -hmm. it was there forever. Mm -hmm. um, and then, but they were always having parties, and if anybody new came to, to town, they wanted to entertain them. Mm -hmm. And so I, I met the, the uh, people from WOI and the Ford Foundation people were actually do, doing experimental program at that time, mm -hmm. and they were entertained by the months, mm -hmm. and uh, I met my future husband through all this. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you were new to town, and you um, were at these parties, and you met WI people, you met your future husband, but um, did you have to audition for the part that you eventually got in WI TV? No. <laughs> there, no, there was nobody else <laughs> interested. <laughs> One of the uh, young producers uh, um, on Ford, uh, 
he had uh, two little girls, and he was interested in children's television, mm -hmm. which was almost non-existent at that right. time. And so we put our heads together to work out what we thought would be a good program for children. And uh, because of my experience with occupational therapy, uh, that helped me a whole lot. And also, mm -hmm. I had been a, a child once myself, and I remembered a lot of that. <laughs> well, I'm thinking of all of these things coming together for you being the first magic window lady for WOI TV. I'm thinking about, as you said, your occupational therapy, which means you knew how to break things down into small pieces and, and manageable and learning compartments, and you knew how to relate to people, and you knew how to use microphones with your radio, and, and then your art comes into play, mm -hmm. knowing how to do things that children would, might like to um, make. What a, perfect, what a perfect combination. It really was. And it was as though it was meant to be. Mm -hmm. And I never, ever expected to have that kind of a career. So once you met the people from WOI-TV, how long from meeting them until actually developing the program? Can you remember how long that took? Well, I met them in the springtime. Of 1950? That, that, that would be probably 52. 52, okay. Because I arrived, yeah. And, uh, and then we worked on it through the summer. Mm -hmm. Oh, also, I would that I I forgot to tell you that my first job was the artist for WOI. That when they, they discovered that they needed an artist, mm -hmm. and uh, and they didn't have my my money to hire a highly trained artist. And I was willing to work for almost nothing. I was having such a good time there. <laughs> so I became their artist. Mm -hmm. And I was, so I set up my studio in one corner of where they had, they had musical instruments and mm -hmm. presented concerts and things like that in that studio. And it was all covered with velvet. It was a wonderful art studio. <laughs> <laughs> and I would sit there and do my little commercials and, and things like that. And I was, and the only, that's the only place I ever worked where I could look at the clock and say, oh, I have four minutes to get finished. That'll be fine. And I'll walk over there and get, give them the or work that I just done. <laughs> wow, that's really being mindful of those deadlines. I mean, when the well, t yeah. TV goes, you have to have it ready. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so probably in the spring of 1952, when you say you started working on it, you started talking about concepts, or you started talking about how you wanted to do it, or how long you wanted to make the show, is that mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And when did you actually go on the air then? Then at I, we did it along with the school schedule. School schedule, mm hmm So I, it was in the fall, mm -hmm. and um, so, and it was after school. The original one was after school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was only three times a week, and um, it was not geared for toddlers. It was after school, so the kids were older, and able to do more things that, you know, mm -hmm. that they needed to do because, you know, that, that, what, what do you do in the winter except go out and play in the snow? Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, Iowa was much different when I came. They still had a, a lot of snow in the winter time, and, and that was fun. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but that was it, but, because most people did not have to of course. Right. So we're just starting in every way. Mm -hmm. And so if it was three times a week, was it a half an hour show? No, it was, yes, half an hour show. 
Mm -hmm. And did you have sponsors? Was it, was it, did you have advertisements? No. No, no, no. it was not sponsored. No. So it was the, the, the regular television show itself was sponsored. Mm -hmm. But, and we, they, they often said they wish they could have a sponsor, wouldn't I? Oatmeal be good one. <laughs> we didn't have sponsors, or we didn't have to take the time mm -hmm. for that. But you had a whole half hour to fill. Yes. And what were the, your activities? Well, I have, as I say, we have one picture, one tape of of one broadcast, mm -hmm. and um, it was. So it was divided, of course. Mm -hmm. I often had uh, animals on there. I have uh, experts in, in all sorts of things that would interest children from the university. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'd have a half a fire engine every once in a while. <laughs> You'd have a what? Half a fire engine. Half a fire engine? Oh my, <laughs> come and pull into the studio? Yeah. We could, <laughs> We, we couldn't handle a whole one. <laughs> <laughs> so you just thought about what children would like to see yeah. and mm -hmm. what might extend their learning opportunities and their craft opportunities mm -hmm. and their, their manual dexterity yeah. skills and, and that kind and of thing. And then at, at that time, of course, everybody who did have a television set did, did it in your living room. There were not family rooms as such. Mm -hmm. So I'd often hear from mothers who appreciated the program, except that they have a terrible time getting the clay out of the carpet. <laughs> they had a terrible time getting the clay out of the carpet. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me a little bit about funny times or amusing times because you were doing live television. Are you comfortable telling me about any funny oh, yeah. gaffes or mm -hmm. things that happened that you just couldn't anticipate? You know, yes, of course. It happened all the time. The, and at one time I thought I was going to get fired because I was so careful about my language and when I would go out I would, you know, Never uh, smoked in public, but I did that anyway. But mm -hmm. you know things like that. I was very interested in my energy with the children. Mm -hmm. And uh, one time it was very uh, the ending of the program was very wild, and things were happening that I didn't expect to happen to me and the staff and the photographer, the, the cameraman, and everything. And finally, the the uh, man who tells you how much time you have, he went he went like this to say I've had two two minutes more, and then all of a sudden I found out they cut it off, and I was I was so upset, and I said, "What the hell is going on?" <laughs> I never swore. I mean, I didn't swear any. <laughs> And do you think it went out over the air? Um, I know it did, but people didn't believe that I had said that. And I, it hardly made a, 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 any impression because nobody expected me to say that. <laughs> you had done a good job establishing that you were a role model for children. And so they would never dream that you would say, oh, what the H is happening. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm sure that sometime a paint pot might have spilled or, or animals might have gone astray and that kind of yes, thing as well. Yes, of course, yes. Well, I can remember also we had a, a sort of a squirrel type of creature. I can't remember what it was, um, but they, they, they he gives them food. They feed them food and they eat it and they eat it and they eat it. You know, you can't imagine where it all goes. And we were all wondering about how wonderful it was, and all of a sudden it flew up all over the <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's part of children learning too, I guess. Huh? <laughs> it probably made them feel uh, better. 
Well, let's talk just a little bit about how technical or non-technical the TV broadcast was. How many cameras did they use? Two. Two cameras. Mm -hmm. So they just had a wide shot and a close-up. Mm -hmm. And I'm just so tickled that you are a professional, even to this day, because when we first started talking, you asked if you should look at me or look at the camera. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you spent plenty of time looking at the camera as well. Exactly. <laughs> and did you rehearse the shows then? Because you'd, you'd have to tell the director yeah. when you wanted a close-up of an item and right, that sort of thing. Right, right. Yeah, we, we would have uh, about a half hour rehearsal before the program. Mm -hmm. And then a little bit bit of time off to get ready mm -hmm. for it. So probably about before the program occurred, it probably would be a, an, uh, an hour mm -hmm. preparation. So you had an hour preparation and you had the program, but you had to do lots of research and preparation away from the studio for the next program. That's right, and I did, I did all the artwork. I used a lot, I do a lot of, of the illustrations. Often I would write a story, mm -hmm. or uh, or adapt a story, mm -hmm. and do illustration for that. Sometimes I would be almost up all night making these pictures, <laughs> and I thought it was so much fun. <laughs> You, it was it was not work. No, it, was it work. really was not. Um, we're going to take a break mm -hmm. and look at one of those little pictures and stories. I think this is a good time to do okay. that. And we'll kind of, you could kind of read the story to me. We'll, uh, we'll be right back, as they say in the television news business. <laughs> Joy was talking about illustrations that she would make to tell stories to the children. And this would be about Abraham Lincoln. This is kind of a shortened version, so go ahead and pretend you were on TV and you were telling uh -huh. me the story about Abraham Lincoln. Yeah. Well, he was born in a log cabin. Everybody knows that, I know. <laughs> I'm not sure he had a nice cradle like that, but who knows? He had loving parents and they could make things for him. And he said, he helped with George. He had a sister. And this is one of the uh, places that we would make a fire and cook things, things like that. He learned to read. His mother was very good at instructing him. And uh, so there they are, studying together. And the first thing you know, he had grown, just like that. And. So mother had to send on to her tiptoes even to measure him. And we heard, we knew that he wanted to be a lawyer. He started out being a farmer, but they knew he would, uh, had a lot more going to him than that. And eventually, here he is, reading by candlelight and firelight, studying books, to learn to be a lawyer, and and that after a little while, he became not only a lawyer; he became president of the United States. Joy, can you tell can you tell us about this art book? Yes, this is a, a, a uh, project that a project. I made to the children. Mm -hmm. They had to send in for it, mm -hmm. and uh, it would be his instructions to how to make very mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. um, I, I should say that they had that before we started the program, and in that initially, they had to get a shoebox, pencil, glue, all those things. So that was their craft kit. I see. And so they had somebody to that haul out after school, mm -hmm. and we always tried to use things that were around the house. Mm -hmm. So the I drew the magic. So I, this was a let's through, we'll look through the marriage magic, magic window. window. 
The world is so full of a number of things, I'm sure we should all be as happy as kings. <laughs> How did you come up with the name The Magic Window? It just occurred to us. I don't, I, I don't know who who came up with it, but yeah, it just, it just. It, that's it. Because we were, the idea was that the world, the, the world has so many things in it. Uh huh. And so if you look through your, your screen, it would be a magic window. There, there, now there are a lot of things about, uh, uh <laughs> well, like, let me see if I can read this. Dear boys and girls, do you <laughs> like to make things? So on and so on and <laughs> it so on. It was kind of like a puzzle for them. Yes. Actually, that's the way kids type now when they text. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> I know that. But you also had instructional things like, let's be tidy and let's get mm -hmm. ready. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you'll need a craft kit. So you, mm -hmm. here we have a shoe box and all the things you will need in it. It's all, mm -hmm. here it is, very tidy, <laughs> as all children's things are, mm -hmm. and all elders also. And then it says, be a collector, mm -hmm. so that you have things, that, not just for junk sake, but things you might need for Craftwork, mm -hmm. and you can make your own paste. Aha! And I bet you had the clay recipe too, with the salt yeah. and the flour, and right, and some dues for you. Mm -hmm. And what were some of the dues? Well, do learn to use silver, silver, scissors and knives properly. Mm -hmm. You can't blame them for biting if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> don't keep your, your bo knives in the box by themselves. <laughs> Why? <laughs> so things like that. How to hold scissors properly. Mm -hmm. Let me take that. That was, that's just being, yeah. yes. Yeah. How to cut a, a perfect square. Mm -hmm. How to make a glider. And so children would write in for this, and then you would mail it back to them. That's right. Uh -huh. And uh, salt and flour clay. I thought that might be in there. <laughs> Tidy, Tidy up. up. Time. <laughs> so that was. Uh, and then this. We had a, a mailbox that uh -huh. appeared every program, mm -hmm. and, and it would bring us mail that the children had sent. Oh, what fun to read their letters. Yes, and we didn't have time to read them all, mm -hmm. unfortunately, but here's the address to send it to. Uh -huh. and, uh, and all they had to write, look at this, all they had to say was magic window. W O I T V Ames, Iowa, mm -hmm. and it got to you. Mm -hmm. I bet you got hundreds of letters. Yes, we did. Very much hundreds so. and hundreds of letters. And one time, time we had a uh, a mail out of, for Valentine's, and and uh, Joy, we're going we're going to take a look at some things from your scrapbook, and I would love to have you tell me a little bit about these pictures. Yes. This is a scrapbook that I made for my parents and initially so that they could see what's going on mm -hmm. uh, way back in, in Regina, Saskatchewan. <laughs> so th this is a production team that started out ma Magic Window. Let's tilt that back just a little bit there because we were okay. just getting a little bit of glare. Perfect. Okay. So the production, who was on the production team? Well, of course, the the stars, the stars of the show. There's the stars of the show, <laughs> yes. Is this is Creighton Canal. Creighton Canal. And a lot of people still would recognize his, his mm -hmm. name. He was a fine broadcaster, but he also told stories to children over the radio. 
and so he worked with me the first year. Mm -hmm. and, and well, there's a picture of you, mm -hmm. and uh, and I. This is one of my two dresses. I had only two dresses. I had to uh, re arrange them every every time to make them look different. You only had two dresses. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually got a letter some t one time saying, why don't you then get another dress? Why don't you get another dress? <laughs> well, you know, that's a time-honored uh, viewer uh, prerogative to comment on TV clothing. <laughs> and who are the gentlemen in the back? Um, this is Dick Hartzell, who mm -hmm. was uh, the producer. Mm -hmm. was, how, are you, how are we doing? We're good. We're fine. Okay. There's a little bit of a wrinkle, but that's okay. Yeah. Well, Dick Hartzell, had, he um, was from St. Louis. He had two little girls, mm -hmm. and he was worried about where television would go according to uh, children's programming. Now, is this the, is the person uh, with the glasses or with the colorful tie the person who was worried about the children's... Um, this is the fellow. Okay, very young, very mm -hmm. handsome. Okay, so that yeah. makes sense. He was the young dad mm -hmm. who was concerned about what children were going to see on TV. Yeah, and exactly. And so that's one reason why Magic Window got started. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. And this is that Dick um, Jake. Oh my goodness, I've been. It'll come to you. Day. No yeah. worries. Anyway, I, I I had a romance with him, <laughs> and but then he was from New Jersey, and he went home for a vacation. And came back married with a girl he intended to marry all the long. Well, there's a little drama behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> do you have some other pictures in your scrapbook yes, to show us? I do. Here's Creighton and me broadcasting with our one microphone. Oh, yes, and the microphone yeah. would have to be careful so yeah. that it didn't cast a shadow mm -hmm. on you folks. Mm -hmm. oops, oops. So here we are reading some of our mail mm -hmm. and worked at a small coffee table. You can see it was... Uh, Let's uh, tilt that forward just a little bit. I'm yeah. sorry. We, there we go. Yeah. There. The state of the art <laughs> coffee table. <laughs> they spared no expense. That's exactly right. <laughs> now sets are more multi-million dollars. And I can see you're doing, let's see, what is this, like a, a craft maybe you're doing there mm -hmm. with yeah. simple tools. I see mm -hmm. paper and a crayon. And they have uh, cut out. There's something cut uh -huh. out there. Right. Yeah. And then we received mail back from the children. Oh, this and is this wonderful. <laughs> oh, and can you read it what it yes, says? it says, there is joy. And I had a, 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 a bird called Echo. Okay. Yeah. That we have this contest about having a pet on our program because mm -hmm. a lot of people would write and say they can't have pets where they live. And so, could you have a pet that they could see? Yes, and mm -hmm. we we own, all owned it. Mm -hmm. We we first we had a, a contest to see what kind of a pet we will have. And the parakeets were very popular at that time, and so we got a parakeet. And I had to send a, a form through the official channels at the university for a parakeet, and that was a little bit complicated. <laughs> <laughs> but you persevered and you got a parakeet, yes. and it was named? And then we had a contest to, to name it. Oh, you had all the right marketing techniques. <laughs> Did you think of it as marketing at that time, or no. you were just engaging their Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you did everything right, because you <laughs> want people to respond to you. you yes. They need a reason exactly. to respond, yes. And so the name that one was Echo because we wanted him to learn to echo our, echo our speech. Our, mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, so that was. And Chit says, I oh, think yeah. your poor gram, I like your poor gram instead of program, <laughs> I think you are very pretty. <laughs> oh, that's very sweet. <laughs> <laughs> and I think 
And I think it is nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and these are just clipping the, the, the I don't know, of, uh, talk that they gave. Oh, yeah, so you were like probably that. a great speaker. You were in demand. It was interesting because I was uh, to end up, up telling people how to raise their children, and I didn't know anything about it. <laughs> you didn't have any yet. Yeah. <laughs> and um, you had started to talk about Valentine's, and I'm yes. sorry, we, yes. we, we just stopped the, the tape at that moment. Yeah. So let's talk about this picture, because that yeah. kind of talks about Valentine's. Yes. It was, we had a contest again. Um, you send in uh, your request for uh, a, a kit to make Valentine's. A kit to make Valentine's, okay. And um, it was not a, nearly as big, or big as the one that we just talked to, yes. to about. But, anyway. but it was kind of a little booklet like that. Yeah. that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and um, we, we thought maybe we would have hundred or so answers. Well, the first mailing we had got seven hundred. Seven hundred requests. Yes. Oh my goodness. And there and there was about twice that many when we ended up. My goodness. And that was a wonderful. Well, in, in the first place, it told W O I that we were successful. Mm hmm. <laughs> and I should have a raise, <laughs> but I don't think I got it. <laughs> But that was that was wonderful. Oh. Are there and any other pages in the scrapbook, or are we not? Kind of, no, at this point here. here. Anything else you want to share? Oh, this this oh, is. Oh, this is good. This is. Oh, okay. This is the sign that I made to introduce the program, but was for addresses on the on the screen before anything else was. So and you then, did the artwork for the program as yeah, well, the professional artwork, right. the. Um, mm -hmm what I would call the intro slide or the right yes and here right. there's another picture of you, of you and uh, at your very sophisticated coffee table right little bookshelf behind you yeah and I see the old-fashioned camera let's we'll mm -hmm. see if I can get a picture of that there it is and the other picture I think is again on the set yes I, I'm not sure what your project is there. I'm going to look for a minute. Okay, yes. Yeah. You had talked about mailings that mm -hmm. you sent out from the magic window because children would uh, request art projects and craft projects and ideas mm -hmm. from you, but they spontaneously sent you things as well. They did indeed. And, and, uh, and I, they had, I think I had probably the world's large selection of, of hot pot holders in the world. <laughs> and this is one of them. <laughs> and I got a lot of Valentine's aprons. So this is one that I was very sweet. Oh, that, oh joy, be my Valentine. Oh, that's darling. If you just rest it on your knees there, I'll get a little bit closer shot of that so, okay. so I can see that. That's really sweet. And I got, you should get, um, we never asked the folks for money or anything like that, mm -hmm. but um, I got, I had a set of fans that you would not believe. One of them was the old soldier that, uh, the, uh, in Marshalltown, the, uh, yeah, it was the old soldiers' home in Marshall Yeah, mm -hmm. yes. And they would send me money every so often, and so you know, I would put it to some uh -huh. use. But that was so sweet. Uh -huh. Did you know you were a pioneer at the time? Did you know that? I, I knew I was a pioneer. I didn't know how far. It but go from where I was to to today. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm 
not as pleased as I might be. I mean, there are wonderful scenes for children, mm -hmm. and there are wonderful scenes that I can watch, mm -hmm. um, and I do. But I, I. But you just couldn't foresee where television was going to go. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And um, as you look back on this, what do you think your contribution to television um, in Central Iowa was? What What do you think you contributed? I haven't thought a whole lot about that. I have thought a lot about what I got from this experience, mm -hmm. and that was you know, one of the wonderful things of my life. Mm -hmm. I think next to having children. <laughs> and, uh, but I don't feel that I contributed very much to uh, television as a whole. I think maybe those uh, 700 uh, Valentines, or 1200 Valentines and uh, the people who sent the potholders might feel differently. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing your memories with us. It, uh, it's so nice that a person who pioneered on TV would speak to us on TV again. Thank you so much. Well, I certainly enjoyed it. Thank you.